Hey humans, how's it going? Susan Ruth here, and in this episode, I talk with Jill. That's not her real name, but we're going to call her Jill, and she is an escort in New York. Fascinating profession. I had a million questions. She was wonderful and answered all the questions. I learned a lot. It it was really super interesting. Um, She talked about her life and uh, her relationships and the people that are her clients, the differences between, you know, what she would, we talk, I asked the question, you know, well, what's the difference between an escort and like a prostitute? And we talked about what feels like derogatory words, what feels like it was, I, you have to listen. It's so good. Oh, hold on. My mac and cheese is boiling over. One second. Hold on. Okay. Crisis averted. The most delicious mac and cheese is saved. Thank goodness. I do. I make a fine mac and cheese, people. I put so many different weird things in it. Not weird. I mean, delicious. Delightful. It's good mac and cheese. If you ever get the opportunity for me to make you mac and cheese, you won't be sorry. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, back to Jill. So Jill lives in New York, a uh, fascinating person. Uh, we talked at length um, everything that I thought that you might want to know the answer to. I asked the question. And, you know, some of it gets very personal, as it would, considering the, the career. And, I mean, it was great. I really enjoyed, I enjoyed talking with her. Uh, honestly, I don't... Most of the females I know have mused on the idea like, oh, I could just go be an escort, you know. Yeah, there's the sex part and maybe that's really weird or, or whatever. But, you know, you get to meet interesting people and talk about interesting things and see the world. And anyway, that that's just musing. What can I say? No disrespect at all. I think many, many, many women, this has crossed their mind. Whether or not they would ever do it for whatever reason... I think it's crossed a lot of people's minds. I also think there's a lot of judgment out in the world for people who choose the sex trade as a profession. And maybe if you're one of those people that think it's just the most heinous thing in the whole world or whatever, um, you're entitled to that opinion. Of course, absolutely you're entitled to that opinion. However, maybe listening to this uh, discussion between Jill and myself, you'll... You'll hear, uh, you know, you'll hear you in there somewhere. That's all I can hope for in doing these podcasts is that every one of us, as we go throughout our lives and we meet all the different types of people doing all the different types of things, no matter where they're coming from, that you're reflected back a little bit so that, you know, we see each other as human beings. That's my goal. That's... (laughs) That's my goal. Anyway, um, now I'm rambling, as I always do. It's okay. Order of business um, that I always like to just sort of get out there, even though it's sort of weird to talk about yourself. Please subscribe to Hey Human on iTunes. Um, Also, check out the Hey Human podcast, which is easily found at heyhumanpodcast.com. And I put links. uh, Jill and I talked about a couple books put links to those books up there. Um, I talk about, you know, I have little bios on the guests that I have on the program. And I also talk about other humans in history that I think are relevant to whatever was talked about on the episode and are just interesting people. So there's that. Uh, Other than that, uh, that's about all. I hope you enjoy my conversation with Jill. I know I did. And now I'm going to enjoy some mac and cheese. So take a listen. Thanks for listening. And wherever you are, I hope you're well. Hi, Jill. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Thank you for being on Hey Human. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So you're in New York City. And you are what one would call, I mean, an escort? Is that the right terminology or... Uh, yes, I would definitely say escort. Escort. All right. So that's an interesting career choice, I'm sure. <laughs> so talk about talk about it. Talk about, you know, what you would describe your job as being, and then uh, maybe just start from the beginning. What what made you decide to have that be your career choice? Um, 
I guess it kind of goes back to I was in college. <laughs> I feel like that always starts there. I um, I was actually leaving to study abroad, and I was broke, so I decided to start stripping. 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 Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Stripping. Yeah. And so I started stripping. I was awful at it. I'm not a hustler. I'm more of like a conversationalist, like you said. So I was never very good at stripping. Now, I'm going to stop you a couple times. So you said, yeah. I, I have no money. I'm going to be a stripper. That's kind of a, that's, most people will be exactly. like, I think I'll work in a bookstore. But I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you decide yes. stripping was the, the way to go? I'm sure a lot of people don't go, hmm, instead of getting a second job, I'm going to become a stripper. Yeah probably a weird way to look at that but yeah um I think I was always just really fascinated by it yeah it's kind of the the world of the night if you will and I was always fascinated with that sort of stuff and um I mean I guess I didn't start working as an escort till like quite a few years later actually but um how long did you strip for Probably total maybe two years, year and a half, okay. almost two. Yeah. Probably. Even I'll though you try. weren't good at it. <laughs> Yo, I tried. They're I like, tried why does really this keep putting her clothes on? That's not how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't figure it out. I couldn't. Just I'm 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 not exactly the most graceful human being. I mean, I guess I am, but I was also a lot younger. So yeah. you grow into yourself if you sure. that is also absolutely. But um, let's see. I guess one thing led to another, and eventually. Somebody suggested it, and I was like, no, 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 I could never do that, I could never do that. It, it, it made me nervous. I was like, I don't, you know, people are scary, like, I don't know. And then I started to think about it, I was like, hmm. And then I started to read books. Like, you know, Belle de Jour, have you ever... Belle de Jour is um, this woman that lived in London and was a call girl, and wrote a book about it, and she was like a secret call girl. Nobody knew that she was doing it, that she was working. And I found her story super fascinating, and then I started reading more and more, and, like, I kind of got really, I was like, okay, this could be really cool. And I ended up moving um, down to Australia, and I was down there, and I ended up working there. So that was my start. How, okay, so did you answer an ad, or did somebody say, hey, I have this friend that has this friend? I mean, how, do you, how does one break into <laughs> something like that? Especially uh, in a safe way, I'm, assu- I'm assuming that that was you probably always, did your yeah. you did your research. I love that you did research. That's so awesome. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah. I was I was so intrigued by it that I was, and I also was all frightened by it. So I wanted to make sure that I knew what I was getting myself into. Sure. So when I lived in Australia, it's legal. So I ended up working at a house. I worked at a brothel. So it was a whole different situation than just being a private sort of escort here in the states um the girls do that as well in australia but i chose the the house way because it seemed safer and it was an easier break into the whole situation so yeah so talk about what that was like what was what was your daily what was your (laughs) day-to-day um i mean so the way that it ran down there the place that i worked at um you would work for 10 hours. It didn't mean that you were working for 10 hours. You would just be there for 10 hours. Yeah, that was your shift. Yeah, your shift was 10 hours. And you'd sit there, and you'd have, like, you were in, like, the back room, like, dressing area. And it had, like, the, you know, you'd work with anywhere between five girls to 20 girls, depending on the time of day and the day itself, the day of the week. And you'd get all pretty, and somebody would come in, and they would say meeting in room A, and you'd... All, we'd all line up and go into room A and introduce ourselves, and the guys would pick us out. Sort of like so, The Bachelor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I kind mean, of. really, let's. That's basically the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's why. That's why I think it's so funny that people have so much judgment around. It. I'm like, what do you think you're watching when you're watching these shows? It's the same idea, really. I mean, everything is the same idea. Everybody's doing. You know, you pick out somebody to paint your apartment. You know what I mean? Like. It just, it's just a, an intimate thing, and people, has, I don't know. It's still, like, it still boggles my mind how it's, how it's an issue. I've, I've actually lost friends over it because people are just, like, Interesting. it's such a, like, terrible thing, and it has nothing to do with them. 
and it, they make it a moralistic issue, and it has nothing to do with them. Right. And it's really sad, actually, that I've lost some friends over it. Yeah, well, that's that says more about them than it says about you, I think. No, of course, yeah. of course. But it's, it's still, it also, it's also heartbreaking because you're like, yeah. really? This this matters to you that much? You don't actually care for me as a person and as a friend? It's yeah. the fact that I'm an escort. That yeah. really, it's like, that's just sad. It makes me sad about people. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. So, were you yeah. scared that first day? I mean, you show up to work, you got your lunch in the refrigerator, you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they Do they pick out outfits provide... and stuff? Do you bring your own clothes? They have they have what they call the um, the costume closet or whatever, and so they had stuff in there. But I pretty much just bought. You know, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, so I had no idea. And I brought like a little really hot bra and panty set and some cute, you know, like little dresses and stuff. And over the, I was there for probably about a year and a half, maybe even two years. So. Over the years, I definitely developed more of a style and, like, what I liked, you know. But you always had to wear fishnets, so we always had to have, like, stockings on. Fishnets? So fish, fishnet, fishnets of all things. Yeah, I don't know why. That's so old school. I know. I know. So, uh, and then, you know, heels and, like, they didn't care if you had tattoos or piercings or anything like that. I mean, they just as long as you were presentable and yeah. it wasn't really... Because some guys so had, like that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was all ranges of people that work there. I mean, it was pretty, it's, it was pretty empowering, actually, because you kind of see, I mean, it got frustrating sometimes, because you're like, I need to make money, and nobody's picking me, and so you're like, ugh, but then you start to think about it, and it's kind of like, well, depends on the day, and who's coming in, and everybody has their type, and everybody finds somebody else beautiful, and so it's, it was very kind of cool to yeah, see that. Yeah, I can understand that. Um yeah. So you're you're in a room and the the guy comes in and he's looking around. Can you tell the difference between the guys that had done it before and had never? I mean, I imagine from their perspective, which you know you can kind of speak to on observational, not you know, but yeah. I mean, definitely. There's there. I mean, yeah, for sure. Of course, you can always tell. Um, I think it's because it's such a common thing in Australia. It's not. It didn't. I didn't. There weren't as many newbies as I would think. Yeah. Um, I was more of a newbie than anybody else was. So. <laughs> so here's a here's a sort of offshoot question in a country that where it's legal, and I believe that prostitution should be legalized and regulated. I mean, and girls kept safe, and I think what yeah. people choose to do with their bodies, as far as drugs and sex and you know yeah. smoking and whatever vegetarian, whatever it is, it's their <laughs> it's their body. If they're a grown up person, they're yeah. age of consent, then guess what? They they get to choose. As long as they're not hurting children and animals. It's always my caveat. No children, no animals. Um, and to that end, actually, another offshoot, I was thinking, you know, I'm sure there are guys who, and women, who have a proclivity for, for children but don't want to act on it, so they go to someone who is of age, consent, have them dress the part, and it can yeah. feed that proclivity without them ever crossing a line, which I think... Yes, if you if you know you have that compulsion, let's be honest, it's in people, and they I mean, can go I, and and act it out in a safe place with an adult. There were, I mean, that's kind of why like doms exist is because of that. I mean, a friend and not a friend of I, of mine. We well, explain what a dom them. is because people listening may not know. Oh, I'm sorry. Know. Yeah, um, it's okay. A, a dominatrix is somebody that um, does like domination um it can range from anywhere between telling them to stand up sit down kiss my toes to you know like it's i can't i don't it's so on physical contact sure yeah Yeah. there's there's a lot i mean it's never there's never i mean it's never usually sex involved you know Guys usually get off because it's something sexual for them in the dom world, but it's not. I mean, not always. It's about domination or submission. Yeah, it's about domination. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Okay, got it. All right, moving on. So, Um, so a friend of mine, we we joke about being a naked therapist because basically a lot of times guys do come and there's like this, this situation that... You know, it is a therapy session. So I have had moments with guys where it is something very bizarre, but they have to act it out 
through because it is safe and it is I'm not going to run around and tell their parents and their you know families that they like this weird thing so it is kind of a safe environment for somebody to act out things that they normally couldn't share with what's an example of something that you've been asked to do and were you freaked out when um there was there was one guy that would come in that would do he was he was definitely an oddball he would he would play with himself and have you play with him uh, play with yourself while he would tell you stories of having sex with his mother that is interesting and they were they were very 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 like in depth to the point that I'm not entirely sure that it didn't happen or he was just incredibly imagined like had a, an incredible imagination I'm not fully sure but yeah that was definitely one of the ones that was like a lot and he would come in fairly regularly and girls could only see him for like an hour or so because it would get so like it would get really in depth and weird interesting and so yeah. they would trade out kind of thing? Yeah. So he would and stay he, the whole day, the, or, I mean... Yeah, he sometimes would stay for quite, you know, like six, seven, eight hours or so. Wow. Um, I mean, people could stay the whole... It was, it's, it's almost like a hotel, so people could stay the whole day if they wanted to. It would just be really expensive. <laughs> what, so what kind of... When you're working for someone else, like any kind of job, I assume that the house gets a, por- a portion, and then you get a portion. Yeah. What was the kind of what were the numbers when you were back in doing it Ugh, in Australia? It's, it's been so long; I don't even know if I could remember. Um, I mean, what they would do is you could do half an hour bookings, and then an hour bookings, and then they would go up from there. Um, the house generally took. I think it was sixty forty. On the ha- on the house, so sixty percent to the house. It's like a publishing deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I honestly can't even remember now. It's been so long. That's okay. Um, All right. But it, I'm pretty sure it was sixty forty, and yeah, we got whatever. But then you could do add-ons to bookings. So <laughs> it was like a menu. It was kind of funny. Like it's pretty. It's pretty funny because you get like you know, this is what you do generally. It's like mutual oral, and then you have sex or you could be like kissing is extra or costumes are extra or you know a song or a, uh, a spa is extra and like all this stuff would be extra stuff like little add-ons and you yeah so, so you could upsell guys basically so you're having oral sex how do you protect yourself from diseases and things i it's mean all, i assume regular sex you use condoms but oral sex is same. Both same. condoms yeah so you, and, you're giving head to someone with a condom on Oh, yes. Interesting. Yeah. That's got to taste and we terrible. Also, oh, yeah. It was definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. You got very used to it, though, after a while. Yeah. I imagine. <laughs> but, um, the, well, and see, the thing is, is you'd bring a guy into the room, and they'd have, on the walls, they would have lights, and you would literally have them stripped down, and you would inspect them, which is so bizarre saying that out loud, but that's what we would do. And if you were concerned about something, you could have another girl that knew more about stuff and was more, like, experienced do a double check. And if you were uncomfortable with anything, then you could just say, I don't want to. Fascinating. Did you ever yeah. ha- come across that guy or girl? I assume they probably went, did you have to, not have to, but was that part of your job to be with women as well? Did women come in? Um, women, yes. I don't, there was... Only, like, two times the entire time I was there that I, well, I mean, we were with each other, but, like, an outside woman coming in with, like, a couple or something, that was only, I, only like, two or three times. Oh, you mean, when, when you say with each other, you mean two girls that other worked girl. for the, yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, two, if a guy two wanted two on one, yeah. Yeah, two other workers, so, yeah. or, yeah. So, I imagine you guys got pretty close, the other workers. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some girls that I still am really close friends with, actually. Yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of funny. You you definitely develop a very strong bond with people when you're in that like environment. There's a lot that you you know that not you know not I'm not saying bad situations. I think just like just the general industry itself ends up being very close just because it's a bizarre sort of. Um, ostracized if you will industry so yeah 
So you're in Australia, you're there a couple of years, you're, you're doing your thing, and then what happens? You say... Um, I, I left and came back here, came back to New York, and um, I was trying to figure out how to get, because I, I was trying to do other things, and I just realized that like I really actually enjoyed it, and I really wanted to experience it here in the city. Did you and, orgasm and stuff when you were with these people, or was it more like you were just helping them reach their climax and things? It just depends. Um, I mean, it's it was a different situation between there and here. It was very mechanical there. Um, occasionally, you know, you have a nice like time, Excellent. and yeah, you get you get a little extra, if you will. Yeah, and I would get off or whatever, but it yeah. wasn't it was it wasn't a daily a daily thing. Not did you have to was, act? Did you have to act like you did though? Um, usually to get people to move quicker, yes. Yes, there's some acting involved because mm-hmm. sometimes it makes them sure. finish a lot quicker. <laughs> we've, all been, we've all been with that guy. It's, I get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, I mean, now it's kind of, and I was also younger too, so I think it was just kind of, I'm here to do this. I need to do, you know, I wasn't really fully... Accepting of not not, not a, I wasn't fully realizing my potential as a as a woman and how I could enjoy and really be involved in it. What do you mean by that? I mean, I think I was young, and so it was kind of you know, bang bang bang. I'm here to do a job. Let me just get it done. Instead of being like, you know, I'm here because I do enjoy it. Let me actually enjoy it. So, and I think just because I yeah. That makes sense. It was, yeah. So you come back to New York. I come back to New York. I met a friend, or a friend of a friend from Australia that lives here, lives in New York, and is an escort here. And I met with her and told her I really wanted to work here. And she helped me set everything up, and I started working here. So how does that, talk me through that, what does that mean, helped you set everything up? Um, so I'd have photos taken, have a website, put an ad up, and so you have an ad, and it's not, we're not talking like back pages of a, um, of a newspaper sort of sketchy ad. There's actually a few different, um, sites that are for high-end escorts that you can put your ad up on, and guys go on there and contact you is it legal in new york no but companionship and um companionship is legal so how do you to how do you how would you word an ad like that um i mean basically if you're looking for let's see how, how would i explain that um I mean, you're not saying, look at me, look at me, sex for sale. It's more like, it's more like this, I am an upscale woman that has an education and would like to meet a, you know, a gentleman that has an education and wants to... For companionship. (laughs) Terrible, just, yeah, Yeah. companionship, companionship. Okay. And they contact you, and I mean, you don't talk about sex, it's not about sex, so... There's no conversation about sex. And some guys, there's a whole other world that we call the hobbyist world where guys are, there's something called TER, which is the erotic review, which basically is a site that reviews escorts. And it's a pretty terrible site in my eye because it makes us commodities and we're people. We're not a menu of services, despite what I said about Australia, whole different world. (laughs) But... This, this website, they have, they, re, guys write reviews of girls and they have to say certain things in order to be on the, on the website. And then they get credit and then they like, and then it's just like this world where these guys are just like, it's like we're trading cards. It's like, have you been with this girl and you've been with that girl? And it's like, they just talk dirty about this. It's pretty, it's pretty nasty. Oh, weird. Okay. Yeah. And they're trying to be like a Yelp situation of escorts, but it kind of makes you feel a little weird. Like, yeah. Like, so do you need to have your friend who sort of helped you get into it in New York, did, 
Did she have to vet you? Or did she have to bring you to the website and say, hey, this girl is a, is a good girl, you know, whatever? Or is that something you just do? And It's just something you, you, okay. you just do. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, obviously your, your wordage on your website and the ad is – it can make, you know – show whether you're higher end or not like what you know and obviously there's a price range girls can charge whatever they want to charge what do you charge so, i charge 650 for an hour um 850 for two, an hour and a half a thousand for two and then it goes up from there and what's your average that people um my my average per client, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Like how often like they how long they, or well, yeah, that's a good question. So how long do they usually book you for, and then how often do you see a person? Is it is it do you get a lot of repeat people? I I do actually. I um, as of right now, my ads down because I keep forgetting to put it back up. But I've been seeing like a lot of my regular clients. Like I see at least two, three, four clients a week. So. And it ranges from an hour to four hours, so... So it can add up. It can, it, yeah, definitely can add up. How do you pay taxes on that, or do you not have to? Um, well, I mean, you should. As a, as a, you know, an independent contractor, you definitely need to, you know, I pay taxes, yeah. so... Yeah. Some people don't. Um, uh, they get caught later. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe they have a real job, or not a real job, but they have, like, a, a day job that they and this is just their pocket money or their savings or something. Sure. It's, it's all different. Um, but, yeah, I, pay, I have a business, and I pay taxes. Do most people pay in cash? Um, yes. I try not to have a paper trail, so I'd rather, not people, I'd rather people not pay through any other way. They're not PayPaling um, you? <laughs> I mean, I, I have had the occasional PayPaler, but um, which I have a different name on my PayPal. It's not my personal, but still, I uh, or even people have credit card. You know, like Square. Square, you can you can pay by credit card. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a proper business name, and a, so I could do that. I just makes me nervous. I don't know. Yeah, I feel yeah. So, have you ever run into clients outside of the office? <laughs> um, it's only happened like once or twice. And, and how did that go? The the first time we both looked at each other, and then we immediately looked away, and then I think I crossed the street. It was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah. And I was like, why does that guy look so familiar? Said, why does he look so familiar? And then it dawned on me, and I was like, oh, shit, this was in Australia. So I was like, oh, my God. And then I, like, crossed the street. I don't think he re- it registered in him yet. I think I got it quicker than him. Yeah. But um, I did run into a client in an awkward situation where I was with somebody. And luckily that somebody had gone to the bathroom. And the, the client actually came up to me, and I almost, like, I almost ran away. Like, seriously, it made me so uncomfortable. I was like, why are you coming up to me? This is such a weird situation. You shouldn't be doing this. And he even had his daughter with, with him and introduced his daughter to me. And I was like, no, this isn't okay. This isn't, like. Wow, that's a boundary pre- thing. That's like therapists. You know, if you see your therapist out and about, they won't acknowledge you unless you acknowledge <laughs> Seriously. Like- we, we have, we have, you know, we have this thing going on behind closed doors and nobody needs to, sure. in that situation, when I'm with somebody and you're with somebody, uh, you know, Found that, it. <laughs> and I had seen him quite a few times, so I guess that's why he felt comfortable enough to, like, do that, but I was uncomfortable, so, and then I think it's all, and then, like, the other time was probably, again, like, the, the first time, like, a passing, like, I'm like, he looks really familiar, and then it clicks, and I just keep going about my business and pretend I don't see them. So. Yeah. Are a lot of your clients married, do you think? Um, let's see. As of right now, the majority of my clients are not married. Um, I have a couple that are, for sure. Um, oftentimes, a lot of them ha- are in marriages that... Because they're always they're normally older gentlemen, so they're in marriages that are have twenty years, so they're not having sexual relationships anymore, and they are just basically living with 
their partner. It's not like... You they know, love them, they're friends, but they're not yeah, sexual. Yeah, it's like their best friend that they're living with, but they're not having a sexual relationship with. Or I've had other clients that have sick wives, and it's, you know, that's another issue um, for them and they, because they can't have a sexual relationship with their sick wife. Or their sick wife actually has told them. I've had clients where this, their wife is like, please go take care, you know, do what you need to do. Just be smart about it. Are most of your clients wealthy? Um, yes and no. I, you know, you do have a lot of well-off men for sure. Yeah. Um, but I don't think everybody's incredibly wealthy. Have you ever so, felt like your life was in danger? I had one creeper situation and that was here in the city and, um, Nothing bad happened. He was just such a creepy person that he had me, I was supposed to meet him at the hotel, went to the hotel, he didn't answer the door, and stopped answering all my emails and texts and phone calls, actually, and I was like, okay, so I was there for like maybe 10 minutes and I left, and went home, and I think I was home for like an hour, and he starts emailing me and starts saying all these crazy things like I want to make you squeal like a pig and something like super like really disturbing and left he left a voicemail on I always had a burner phone so it wasn't thank god my actual phone number but then he called me like seven more times and was saying like crazy shit like I want to spank you and tell your ass is raw which is like it would be fine in a different context if that was like it was like, this is what we're doing for our session. But he was just a complete and utter creepy, disturbing person. That, yeah, I'm glad he didn't open the door then. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Um, I mean, I would have I would have left because I, I, I do have really good intuition. Like, I knew then that it was something fell off in the beginning before I even left for the hotel. So ever since then, I've never, and this was early on. I mean, I've been working in the city for quite, a, like, four years now. So... If my intuition is ever off, I don't do anything. Sure. What's your so. What's your monthly intake? How much money do you make a month? I'm just going to ask all the questions because I hope <laughs> you don't fine. mind. I'm just like, well, I'm just going to ask. Um, I mean, it... The IRS it... isn't listening. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're anonymous. So. <laughs> yeah, right? Um, well, I mean, it ranges. It can be anywhere from I have a really crappy month to I just barely paid my rent to I made 15, 20 grand. Wow. So, yeah. Do you not save month to month so that you have? I've been in and out of a lot of things personally. So, um, I was in a relationship and that kind of messed things up a lot. So I didn't, it didn't really help my savings situation. I, I don't understand I, that whole, what do you mean? How did I, it... so I was in a relationship and um with jack with jack good old since, jack and since jill, you're jill. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as i love him it got very you know it, it's hard to be in a relationship and do this to to be in this job in this profession but you met him i did meet him through i did he was he was a, a client and then we developed a relationship and it got it 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 was really hard because you start to want, when you're in a relationship, you want to spend more and more of your time with that person and you get very involved. And I started to slowly stop working. And then it got to a point where if I had to work and he, we made plans, I honestly, he made me feel guilty for choosing work over him. So I got to a point where I guilted myself out of working even though financially I was not able to take care of myself nor was he taking care of me so because he was after you know when when you're in a late he was no longer my client he was my boyfriend so he would help occasionally but I was I was getting to the point where I I honestly was not paying my bills because I wasn't working at all yeah yeah Hi, what happens to your other clients when you meet somebody and, and they're used to you being there for them and suddenly you can't be because you've got this other guy who wants all your time and certainly doesn't want you spending time with another man. Yeah. Um, 
oftentimes I definitely share things about myself, but depending on the client and the relationship that we've developed, I don't tell people that I'm in a relationship. Um, I try to keep that safe in another place. Private. Because, yeah, yeah try to keep it private. So, I mean, there were there were a few clients that, I mean, when I finally got to a point where I just dwindled down, I stopped working for probably maybe six, seven months, I think. And I lost a lot of my clients, obviously, because I stopped working. And I told a couple of them that I was in a relationship, and that's why I was stopping. And it was kind of, they were, like, devastated. Even though a couple of them were married, they were devastated that everything was ending. But for the most part, I don't tell people about that part of my private life. Like, sure. I keep that, like, a whole different place. But I'll tell them about, like, my friends and stuff I'm doing and, like, you know, what I'm doing in my life. I just keep the the boyfriend out of it, usually. How much of what you do is about uh, emotional and not physical? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I know that they come to you expecting to, well, maybe not even expecting, but... <laughs> Generally, it would run and it would become sex. But how much of it is really not even about that? Because I, I personally believe that sex isn't necessarily the most intimate thing you do in a relationship. That the communication is the most intimate thing you do in a relationship. It's the most yeah. vulnerable and open and all that. It's easy to stick your penis into someone. That's not <laughs> hard to do. You know what I mean? Or whatever yeah. it is. So, so how much of it is that? Is that where somebody's just lonely or wants to talk and there's their significant other or maybe they're in a job that they're working all the time, they don't have any social life, you know, whatever. I mean, I would say that's the majority of it. I would say that would that's definitely the majority of it. This conversation and naked therapy. You know, they tell me about what's going on in their life and I give advice. I have one client, I love him to pieces, he's the sweetest thing in the world and he was madly in love with this woman that basically she's, I think she, she's a little on the nuttier side and he just is so blinded by the fact that he loves her. Even though I know, I get it, it's weird that he's coming to sit in his court and telling me about this girl he's madly in love with, but it is what it is. Sex and, and love are not the same thing. It's true. Yeah. And it based on, like, I just had, like, therapist conversations with him and he was like he was so grateful that I was I was showing him another side of what was going on in his life and kind of I brought something to it like his attention I think it was just like he was so enthralled in her that he like wasn't even like he wasn't even taking care of himself and I was like why are you need to like take care of yourself because you're gonna you know can't do anything for her if you're not okay and he was like oh my god I had no idea it didn't even cross his mind to like so it does get very emotional and therapeutic and that sort of thing yeah. versus the sex part I mean that obviously plays a role but like you said it's you know sure absolutely so you and Jack had you were together you lost clients because of it or the clients went away and yeah. then you and Jack got decided were you decided no I miss working and I want to get back to that or um yeah I pretty much quit for him I kind of felt obligated to quit for him lots of pressure so I went back to doing other work that just wasn't satisfying and I found myself incredibly miserable and I finally just snapped and was like I can't do this anymore I you know and it I tried to break up with him and go back to work, and he wasn't having me breaking up with him, so <laughs> he's like, fine, just go back to work, and so yeah, I started going and working again, and it was a struggle, and it's, it's an interesting relationship, that's for sure. Yeah, as one would imagine. Have you ever had to be with somebody that you found physically repulsive, and then how do you deal with that? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> um, you just get past it. I can't explain it. I, 
I have a tendency that I can find good in a lot of people, so it's very rare that even if somebody's very overweight and I can, I can make it work. I don't know. And also, I don't have to have a erect penis, so nobody knows what whether I'm excited or not. So it's fun, you know what I mean on that like aspect. <laughs> good point. So I don't have to worry about that, but I can also make it work. The only time is that it's really bad is when it's somebody that's unfortunately smelly and I can't. I had one client. Oh my goodness, he was a lot older, a lot older. And he just was so smelly. Like, I had a really hard time. I would gag a lot. Can yeah. you not and have I, him take a shower? Is that not part of the protocol when you get together with someone? I mean, normally, he was always freshly showered. It just, it wasn't, it was... It, Something internal. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how much, it, like, I know. how much detail to go into. It's okay, you can go into detail. <laughs> I mean, people are interested. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, he, he had... He was uncircumcised, and he had, like, a tight, the tight Head. foreskin. Foreskin, yeah. yeah. And so, and unfortunately, if you don't clean properly, not that he wasn't clean. Like, I, I feel weird saying that, because it's not that he wasn't clean. It was just that, like, it was the fact that, like, it would smell after a little bit. Even if you were flush, freshly showered, because of the tightness of the foreskin, it traps things and so and he would squirm and it just made it worse and yeah he would squirm around like he'd get very excited and he'd squirm like I that's the only way to describe it you're talking about during oral sex yeah yeah Yeah. wow so it, it was just and I would try to do everything to like keep it from feeling from being smelly and it just like I said even if he showered I'd have to like, scrub him down, I think. Did he know that he was smelly? Probably not. Is it your I obligation mean, think, to, to just not tell him, or would that... I don't know. I never thought about that. I think I just kind of... Did you fire him as a client? <laughs> I mean... I tend to be very, very, very upsettingly patient with people, so I let things go a lot further. Not like, obviously, if I was in danger, that would be a different situation, but I think it got to the point where I was the only person that would actually see him still because I was okay. I was fine. And then I think after the last time I saw him, I was kind of, I was, I was gagging so badly, and I just also have like a, like, I'm sensitive to smell, too, so I'm sure that didn't, yeah. And he was just so, just, he's so squirmy, and he was just so much older that I just was, I got to a point, like, the man had to have been in his 90s, had to have been. And he had so many, like, his legs were so, like, faint, and I feel like such a terrible person no, saying all this stuff. No, that's because okay. It's like, he's not, he's not going to know. <laughs> No, I know, but it's just like, I don't want to... What do you mean you had him in his undies? You made him keep his underwear on? What? No, he took his underwear off. Oh, okay. How old was he? He was in... He had to have been in his 90s. What? Wow, that's... Yeah. So fascinating. Good for him for still getting an erection. That's impressive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not like he lasted very long, but... Thank God, right? (laughs) Yeah, right. Yeah, he was an interesting, he was an interesting character. What do you do when you open the door to the new client and he's, you know, older than the crypt keeper? <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, that was probably the only time that that, he, that somebody was so insanely older. And I, I actually don't even know if he was that old. He just, there was something... Just by his physical appearance, there's no way that he was under the age of 80. There was just no way. Have you ever had a parent send their their child, not child, their like 18-year-old to you to deflower? Oh, God, that's so scary. (laughs) I mean, in the movies, that happens all the time. (laughs) (laughs) I had one instance in Australia with one of my, she's, she's one of my best friends to this day. Her and I were in a double with... Um, a, a kid and his uncle, and that was weird. 
That is interesting. Yeah, they were like high fiving each other over the beds. Like it was like, okay, this is just this is just bizarre. Interesting. Um, I don't think I've ever. Well, I got one virgin my whole my my whole time, and he was probably in his like early twenties, maybe like nineteen twenty. And he was like this poor kid. He was like six seven. He was this huge like super tall kid. And he just was so nervous. And then I was really nervous because he was so nervous. And it was in Australia. It was a, it was an hour booking. Like, he was fine. We talked. He was calm. And then it was it was very sweet. It wasn't. But I felt, I felt bad for him. I was just like, well, this poor kid. He was just so awkward, you know, when you're 6, 7 and you're 19 and you don't know what you're doing. Or like 20. And, yeah, he obviously couldn't talk to girls to save his life. So I was just like, aw, you Aww, sweetheart. Poor thing. <laughs> I know. Jeez. Well, so what do you think is the biggest misconception about uh, escorts? I, that we're, we're dirty. That we're stealing husbands that, you know, that we're fake. That we're walking the streets. You know, it's not... I'm somebody's sister and I'm somebody's daughter. Like, I'm a human being. I'm not, like, I'm not a dirty person. I'm a nice person. I'm not out to steal your husband. I, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm sure there's many more than that, but... So how long have you been doing this for? Oof. Uh, probably about six years, actually. Oh, wow. That's a long time. Yeah, quite a while. It's, I mean, off and on, I've taken my... And how old are you? 32. 32. You don't look it. You look about 22. <laughs> you do. You Thanks. look young. You do. Um, so at six years, do you think you're going to continue to do it for a long time? Or I mean, who's the oldest escort you know that you're friends with? How old is she? Um, well, she's... Goodness, how old is she? 44, I think. 43, 44? Some either... We've stopped counting because she doesn't want to count anymore. <laughs> yeah, I feel her. Um, I did meet an escort at one time that she was in her 50s. She was 52. Mm. So a 52-year-old escort. Um, I definitely don't want to do it for another 20 years. I think that's too much, and I might go crazy because it's intense. It's like it's a lot of give and take when you do this this job. Mentally, physically, it's it's exhausting. So... I mean, I'd like to, because I do enjoy it, for some, for longer, I don't know how longer I'm going to do it. I do have other aspirations for life, so <laughs> I would at some point like to do other things. Um, have you ever had a health scare? Um, I mean, I am so paranoid that I get checked all, like, all the time, and then if I have, like, razor burn I freak out and think I'm dying and go to the doctor and I'm I, like I'm so so insanely careful about that yeah um, is your doctor aware of your profession n- no but they do think I'm a hypochondriac <laughs> so <laughs> do you still have the same practice when you meet a new client do you do you give him the you know 360 check the, him over the, the light no, I wish I could. I'm sure I could. Um, Why don't you? But what's that? How come you don't? It's kind of scary. I mean, imagine walking into you. You. You're. I mean, for the for the guy and for the girl. Imagine walking into. I mean, I guess it's a it's a safe practice, and I should do it. But um, I also have have figured out a good way that when I first meet somebody. I don't obviously go straight into sex or anything like that. It's like a slow process, and I check them out without them knowing that I'm checking them out. Right. That makes so, sense. Do you ever yeah. ask? Do you do they have to fill out a 10-question a question questionnaire beforehand? Do they have to sign a waiver? I mean... No, that would be awesome if we could have somebody sign a waiver. I'm sure if it was decriminalized, then it was... Yeah. It was a different situation in the states. We could do that, but yeah. because it's the way that it is, it's. I mean, I do know that some girls are a lot more that would do something like that. Like it's not unheard of, but 
guys get freaked out. I mean, if guys already are freaked out about it sometimes, that's going to be even more of a deterrent, which is fine. If you're freaked out, you're freaked out. You don't need to be pressured into doing anything you don't want to. But Do you only meet in hotels? No. Um, I actually work a lot out of my own apartment. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That doesn't worry you? Um, I screen everybody. It's not like I'm just randomly picking up somebody from a bar or I'm answering every, hey, hey, are you up? Can we, you know, can we meet email? I heavily screen people. I'm a whiz at Google and there's some amazing things, amazing services that you you have to keep you safe. Like what? So, what, what are some of those? There's a couple different um, uh, sites that you can put information that they give you and it shows like we, there's a lot of reliance on other girls in the industry. Like if something bad happens, there's a site that we put stuff on like a blast blacklist site. Um, there's a couple of those. So meaning if, uh, if something bad happens, like the, the squeal, like a pig guy, I wrote out a whole thing that was like, this guy's, this guy's super creepy and could be dangerous. Be careful. Yeah. And so, and then also you can do, I mean, their emails, obviously their phone numbers, like you check everything. Yeah. And then you go, like, there's a network of girls that I trust if they, if they've seen a guy, like we refer people to each other. Um, and after a while, just being in, when a guy says she's seen, seen this one person it's like you like you know you're comfortable with her you've had conversations with her you always ask her like have you seen this guy is he okay is there anything we need to know so there's a lot of screening that happens i'm not letting just anybody walk in my front door right um thankfully i haven't had an issue because i am so much like the health situation i'm very i'm i'm a paranoid person i tend to like do everything I can so I feel comfortable otherwise there's no use doing something if you're not comfortable sure that makes so. sense I think that's true in life in general yeah yeah do you have any kind of regrets at all do you are you still do you ever think why did I go this route or are you fully confident and happy with your choices I mean it's it the, the one of the biggest things that makes it hard is the fact that me personally I can't really tell my family um, my brother knows and my sister-in-law knows, but then that became an issue and then I quit. So they no longer know that I work anymore. Nobody knows in my family. Um, so I have a pretty good backstory at this point, but it's still like, that's probably one of the biggest regrets is that there is a huge chunk of my pers- my me that I can't share with a lot of people. And that's probably the only thing that is a regret is that I can't always be myself. Yeah. Which is kind of heartbreaking. But, I mean, I'm not, it's not, some other girls, like my best friend, her family, all of her people know, all of her family know. She has friends now that she won't tell, but all of her family knows. So, it's case by case with that. But for me, that's what it is. Does your family have a religious background? Is that why you think? Um, no, I mean, yes and no. Neither one of my parents themselves are religious, but I think it's just, it goes back to the stigma, even though I don't believe in the stigma. I think a lot of people do that. It's like, why is my daughter having sex with men for money when she could be doing something else? She's so talented. She needs to be doing this and that. And my baby is so wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's like, this isn't, you know, it doesn't make me a bad person. Yeah. So is Jack the first time you had a client that you fell in love with? Is that very rare? Yes. Um, I had one client that I really adored, but it was definitely not love. Jack is the is the only love situation yeah. that has happened. So yeah. It's a fascinating. The, I mean, I'm sure after we stop talking, I'll have a thousand more questions. Is there anything? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's just the way it works. Is there any other thing that you want to... Uh, talk about that you might want to kind of get out there to the is there anything that you want to 
have the listeners know about your chosen profession, about you, besides the the dirty the dirty stigma that you've already spoken yes. to, but just in general, is there something that you'd want people to know? I mean, I guess you know, we all we all need love, we all need touch, and that's a huge thing. Like, touch is a huge thing for people, and you don't really realize it until somebody comes to you and they're just like, I haven't been touched in a, like in a very long time or just that like nice, sweet and like compassionate, loving touch. A lot of people don't get that on a daily basis. And, you know, it is kind of coming down to being nice to one another and hugging each other. (laughs) Yeah. It's just kind of, it's interesting that like you don't really realize how much, how important touch is, even if it's something small. Yeah. So even like touching somebody's shoulder when they look like they're having a bad day will make things better. Yeah. That's a, I mean, I think that's a lovely message. Yeah. I, mean, I, know it's, it's, I say all the time, it's a tough planet and we're all in this yeah. together and you know, isolation is not helpful to make people feel better. Yeah. You know, and there are quote unquote untouchables in the world who need love and there's, People who maybe aren't good at emotional attachments, they still need something to... Exactly, and I mean, that's what you, that's, we get a lot of that. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show, I really appreciate it. Yay! Yay! Okay. Hopefully that, hopefully that went well. <laughs> I, I would, I would say, okay, here, here's, normally I put links to people's stuff so that people can find them, but in this yeah. case, I suppose that's not no, really appropriate. Not. <laughs> However, um, I, you talked about that book, which sounded really good, so I'll, I'll put a link to the book, and. Yeah, I've got, I mean, if people are interested, I've got a, I've got a plethora of research. If you have a reading <laughs> list, please email it, to, email it to me and I'll put it up as a, yeah, as a reference I'll, guide. Yeah, why not? I'll I'll give you that for sure. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.